Today, we have a list of all of the brands that didn't make it past the Great Depression. This is a list from 1929 to 1940. The Great Depression was caused by the basic answer is overspending, banks giving out way too much money, individuals putting the money into the stock market, and banks making interest off of the loans given out to the individuals and putting that money into the stock market as well. It was all a great thing. Everybody was making tons and tons of money until the media being the propaganda machine that they always have been put out articles saying that the stock market was going to crash. So people got really spooked that they were going to lose all of their money. The powder keg that ignited everything was October 24th, 1929, known as Black Thursday. At the end of the day, the stock exchange closed with 12.9 million stocks being sold that day. The stock market was able to sort of right itself, but come Tuesday of the following week, also called Black Tuesday, more selling took place. 16 million. Oh, wait, it gets worse. Markets would lose a total of 14 billion in a day. Some stocks were literally worthless. The banks that borrowed money from individuals who had accounts with them, they couldn't pay them back. Everybody went from having the good life to the worst nightmare in a matter of days. The more I read into this, it's almost like the New York Stock Exchange is like a giant Ponzi scheme. Just think about it for a second. Not everybody can get their money back at one time. The Great Depression affected everyone, and it really didn't end until World War II was at our door. So here's a list of 52 auto companies that went bust during that time period. Founded in 1916, Barley Motor Car. It was a luxury car brand based in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and later moved to Stratator, Illinois. Barley had three car companies under the brand umbrella. Barley Motors was kind of sort of the umbrella name, almost like, you know how GM has like five makes underneath their umbrella? Barley had three. They made the Barley from 1922 to 1924, Pennant from 1924 to 1925, and the Romer from 1916 to 1929, which is also later on this list. Barley Motor Car would go bust by 1929. Davis in Richmond, Indiana. Davis built carriages before getting into the automotive business in 1908. They built motorized carriages and touring cars powered by four-cylinder and six-cylinder engines supplied by Continental Motors. Same company Kaiser used in the 50s. They went bust by 1929. Falcon Knight, which was produced for two years, 1927 and 1928, by the Willis Overland Company, but by a different company. Their headquarters was in Detroit, Michigan. Falcon Knight was to be the middle option in Willis Overland lineup. They had the Whippet at the bottom, Falcon Knight in the center, Willis Knight at the top. The Falcon Knight was ultimately replaced with a new model that came out in 1929. Kleiber built commercial vehicles from 1914 to around 1919-ish, and they started car production from 1924 to 1929. According to Wikipedia, they go bust in 1929. Kleiber Historical Post, I found the same company didn't go under until Paul Kleiber, the founder died in 1938, and his company died with him. They used Continental engines as well. So that's a bit of speculation. I don't know if they went under in 1929 or if they went out in 1938. Founded in 1899, Locomobile, they were a pioneer in the auto market. They built cars that ran off of steam, your own personal steam engine with all the smoke and the whistles, everything except for stoking the fire while sitting at the driver's seat. They went gas engines eventually. Locomobile was acquired by Durant Motors in 1922. Durant would use the Locomobile brand as the top line brand underneath their umbrella and killed it off in 1929. Murray Mack, based in Atlantic, Massachusetts. They built cars from 1921 to 1929. They made the 8, which was powered by a six-cylinder engine, and it never really caught on. 
Romer, remember back to our first entry, Barley Motor Car? This car was a branch of that company. The first model was the four-door tour, powered by the Continental four-cylinder, marketed as America's smartest car. Romer would ditch the Continental four-cylinder in favor of a straight eight made by Lycoming. That made 88 horsepower. Declining sales killed the Romer in 1929. Moving on to 1930, these are all cars that were killed in 1930. Black Hawk, which was offered for two years, 1929 to 1930, a product of Stutz Motor Car Company. Think of this car as the basement Stutz. It's down on power, so the price is lower. It was offered with your choice of an overhead valve 6 that made 85 horsepower or an overhead valve 8 that made 95 horsepower. With only 280 units produced in 1930, the mark was dropped. S-Gun, which was produced from 1927 to 1930, it was a product brand of Studebaker. The mark was named after Albert Russell Eskin, Studebaker's president. Eskine's last year was 1930. Graham Page built cars from 1928 to 1930 with the purchase of two engine companies, the Page Detroit Motor Company and the Jewett Motor Company. The only issue was they didn't have a foundry, so they couldn't make any more of their engines, which is really weird. Why would you have an engine company and you know, not have a foundry? So they ended up going to Continental Engines for some more engines. Sales ultimately slumped, and the brand was done by, it was conflicting information, 1930, others say 1932. Graham would live on until 1940. The Graham Page name would live on until 1962. Kissel, Hartford, Wisconsin, they built engines and outboard engines at first, and then they got into the car business in 1906. Kissel Car, Goldbug, and trucks are what they are best known for. They stopped auto production around 1930. Marquette GM had a junior series program. All GM makes except for Chevy got a junior series. Oakland had Pontiac, Oldsmobile Viking, Buick Marquette, Cadillac LaSalle. So Marquette is the junior series to the Buick. It was only offered one year, 1930, despite selling 35,007 units in the United States and Canada making an additional 6,535 units for a total of 41,542 units. Total wasn't enough for a second year. Red Bug, 1924 to 1930, they were a cycle car company. This vehicle was electric and it looks super safe, right? They stopped producing these around 1930. Roosevelt, 1929 to 1930, it was manufactured by Marmon and only offered in two years, 1929, 1930. It was designed to be the everyman affordable car with a price tag of $995, which is equivalent to about $17,505 two cents now in the year 2023. It was powered by a straight eight. It was replaced by the Marmon Model 70. Shawmobile, 1908 to 1930, they started off as a motorbike business after building the first engine and they got into the car business, but their car business was the mail-in order variety and do it yourself. More conflicting information. Some sources say Shawmobile dies in 1930. Other sources say do it yourself Speedster was sold and advertised for sale well into the 30s. Windsor produced cars from 1929 to 1930 it was under the umbrella of the Moon Motor Car Company. They also had a company named Diana Motors, which sales were also tanking from both of those companies, for a new start with a new name because sometimes it's all about the name to just get the recognition that you need for a brand to have a good name that sticks out. Unfortunately, Windsor wasn't the name that hit the jackpot, so to speak, so they only built one car, the Windsor White Prince, powered by Continental Straight 6 or Straight 8. Yellow, established by John T. Hertz. They were in business from 1915 to 1930, and they were associated with the Yellow Cab Company. They built cars and light-duty trucks. They were eventually sold to GM in 1925, with the name going on until 1930. American Steam Automobile founded West Newton, Massachusetts, and built cars between 1924 and 1931, mostly catered to previous Stanley Steamer owners because most of the Stanley Steamers were largely modified versions of this car. They stopped making cars in 1931. Doble Steam Car, 1914 to 1931. 
It's a company that has four brothers in it. Abner Doble built his first steam car between 1906 and 1909 while still in high school based on a wrecked white motor company steam car. The brothers would go on to build their own engine, which didn't really run all that well, but this company would go on to build the best steam cars that ever drove on God's green earth. Leno has one. I will link his video in the description. DuPont was in business from 1919 to 1931. They produced 625 cars. They made high-end luxury cars right up there with Packard, Cadillac, and Stutz. Durant Motors, established in 1921 and sold cars until 1931, established by X. GM CEO William Billy Durant. Durant wanted an umbrella brand, much like how GM has five brands under their umbrella. They sold Flint, Durant, and Star. Durant acquired Locomobile, which was their premium brand. Price points to compete with all levels of GM. Last Durants were sold in 1931. Ironically, Durant Motors was sold to GM in 1935. Elker, 1915 to 1931. A lot of people refer to this car as the best made car that was built during that time period. The company made cars from 1915 to 1931. Resources were badly affected during the Great Depression and they couldn't build cars anymore because they couldn't get the supplies needed to build the cars. So they closed their doors in 1931. Henny, 1921 to 1931. Before building hearse and professional cars for Lincoln, Cadillac, and Packard, they dabbled with manufacturing cars, built from 1921 to 1931. Jordan, founded in Cleveland, Ohio, 1916 to 1931, known for style over engineering. Jordan was the first car manufactured for women, or at least that's what this article says, but I think Baker Electric beat it. In 1927, Jordan introduced the Little Cushion Luxury Compact, which totally bombed. And the company survived the stock market, but ceased production in 1931. Oakland, 1907 to 1931. Oakland was private from 1907 to 1909. It was purchased by GM, and it was a staple at GM until the GM Junior Series. Pontiac was the Junior Series to Oakland. GM decided to cancel Oakland instead of Pontiac in 1931. Viking, 1929 to 1931, another GM Junior Series. Viking was the Junior Series to Oldsmobile. Viking used a 260 cubic inch displacement, 4.3 liter flathead monoblock V8. It was the last time that Oldsmobile offered a V8 until the Rocket V8 came out in 1949. Essex, 1918 to 1932. 1918 to 1922, Essex was independent. Hudson bought them and used their name until 1932, changing the name to Essex Terraplane. Essex was dropped between 34 and 35, somewhere around there, for Terraplane. Little Mac, 1930 to 1932. Truckette, manufactured by Thompson Motor Company in Muscatine, Iowa. Ranch and Lang. They were incorporated in 1884. They were known for building expensive carriages. They got into the automotive business in 1903 with the acquisition of Buffalo Electric. Ranch and Lang merged with Baker Electric in 1915. They were experimenting with new engine ideas. Then the stock market crashed and that put an end to all of that. The last would roll off the line in 1932. Jaeger Motor Co. In Bellevue, Michigan, they built affordable cars, $700, which would be equivalent to you spending $16,199.08 in 2023. They offered coupes and convertibles powered by the Continental in Line 6. They built cars between 1932 and 1933. Marmon built cars from 1902 to 1933. It was a big name in the luxury car market back in the day. Indianapolis, Indiana, known for the V16. They wanted to be the very first company to offer the V16. They started working on their engine design in 1927. They didn't finish the design until 1931, but by that time, Cadillac had a V16 of their own on sale. There was three U.S. companies that offered the V16 back in the 30s. Marmon, Cadillac, and Peerless, but Peerless only built one prototype. While on the topic of Peerless, 1900 to 1933, based in Cleveland, Ohio, one of the three P's in luxury, Peerless, Pierce Arrow, 
and Packard. Packard was the only one to survive the Great Depression. Drum brakes and closed cabs are what they were known for. Buying public couldn't eat, let alone buy expensive cars. They did manage to build one V16 prototype before going bust in 1933. Rockney, 1932 to 1933, produced by Studebaker for those two years. Brand was named after a university Notre Dame football coach, Coot Rockney. Willis Knight was a product that was offered from 1914 to 1933 by the Willis Overland Company in Toledo, Ohio. Introduced the sleeve valve V8 in 1917 and produced it until 1919. The company would go into receivership. Willis then directed its attention to an inexpensive Model 77. DeVox, 1931 to 1934, Grand Rapids, Michigan. 1931, they claimed to have 8,000 orders, but that was a little bit of a white lie to get some financial backing. DeVox filed for bankruptcy in 1932, with only 4,808 vehicles being produced. Continental Motors bought DeVox, and they went by the name either Continental DeVox or DeVox Continental. With only a few minor changes being made to the cars, 1,358 cars were produced. These were also powered by Continental's engines. Franklin, founded in 1902, Syracuse, New York, they built air-cooled cars with four, technically five, distinct styling periods. Franklin could start to see the writing on the wall as far back as 1929. As a last-ditch effort to drum up sales, they built a Hail Mary car, 1932, supercharged, air-cooled V12. It was their swan song. Franklin went on to build air-cooled engines, which was bought by Preston Tucker right after World War II. After Tucker disbanded, Franklin would go on to build air-cooled engines until 1975 when the name was dropped. Continental, 1933 to 1934. This was on the heels of the DeVox, but Continentals did not share anything with that car. 1933, Continental was offered in three model ranges. The Ace was at the top, the largest and most expensive car on offer, followed by the Flyer, which had a six-cylinder engine, and the Beacon, which had a four-cylinder engine. It was the cheapest Roadster for sale in the United States at that time, $335 which is equivalent to you spending $7,752.41 in the year 2022. Building the cars was proven to be unprofitable, and they gave up on car production in 1934. New Era, 1933 to 1934, 1775 Broadway, New York City, marketed as New Era Ford, six to seven passenger sedans, limos, and taxis. Powered by the flathead Ford V8 and based on Ford Model 40. Stutz, founded in 1911 and built cars until 1935, was known for making cars for the rich and famous, building sports cars at first and then venturing into the luxury car market. Stutz filed for bankruptcy in 1937, court-ordered liquidation. It's important to note that Virgil Exner would revive the brand in 1968 and it would last until 1987. Auburn, best known for the Auburn Speedster, fast, good-looking, expensive cars, founded in Auburn, Indiana, 1864, as the Eckhart Carriage Company. Eckhart's sons began building cars, sold the company to investors in 1919. The investors couldn't make the company profitable, so they sought help of E.L. Cord, a salesman. Investors were going to pay E.L. Cord to run Auburn. Cord countered with a buyout, which the Chicago investors promptly took. After the stock market crash of 1929, the need for expensive cars subsided. Cord sold his shares, and automotive production ended in 1937. Cunningham, no affiliation with Briggs Cunningham or Cunningham Steam Wagon, founded in 1896, switched to horseless carriage production in 1908, developed a V8 in 1916, Cunningham built cars from 1908 to 1936. Brewster and Company. James Brewster founded the company in 1810 and was a carriage company in New Haven, Connecticut. They had a reputation of being the best carriages in the country. They built cars from 1915 to 1937. Duesenberg, which was known as America's luxury racing brand, they made really powerful engines that would be unmatched for decades. Duesenberg would struggle financially. It was placed in receivership in 1924. The company was bought by E.L. Cord in 1926. 
Cord sold all of his stock shares in 1937 and production ceased. Cord, luxury brand of cars built from 1929 to 1932, the first U.S. mass-produced front-wheel drive, Cord L29, another model that Cord made was the 810 and 812. Cord would go on to sell all of his stock shares and production would halt in 1937. Established in 1865 as the Heinz, Piers, and Monshiner Company, which was best known for household things such as gilded bird cages and refrigerators. After buying the other two out in 1872, focused on bicycles, and son, Percy, would take over the bicycle business and venture into motorcycles. Pierce Arrow would build cars and trucks from 1900 to 1938. C.R. Patterson and Sons, founded in 1893 in Greenfield, Ohio, which started as a carriage company. They got into the auto business in 1915, went into bus production in the 20s. Unable to raise enough capital, they ended up closing in 1939. Overland, founded in Toledo, Ohio in 1903, the founding company of Willis. Overland would eventually just be absorbed into the Willis brand name by 1939. Terraplane, manufactured by Hudson from 1932 to 1939, took the place of Essex. Terraplane sales during the Depression outpaced Hudson. By 1938, the last year of Terraplane, both Hudson and Terraplane was used. The name was dropped entirely by 1939. Graham built cars from 1930 to 1940, offered in six and eight cylinder cars in the early 30s and was just kind of sort of hanging on. Hupp would go on to buy the dies to the Cord 810 and 812 and share them with Graham so that they could use their factory to build cars, which is another total head scratcher. If you're a car company, you need a factory to build cars in. Why do these car companies just sell off all their assets and still are like, yeah, we're a car company. We're going to still build cars. Well, where are you going to build cars at? You can't build them in your backyard. Anyway, Graham's last car was the Hollywood and it shared the body and design with the Hupmobile's last car, the Skylark. Graham production would cease to exist in 1940, but the name did live on in one way or another for a long period of time after that. Speaking of Hup, Hup Motor Car Company built cars from 1909 to 1940. If only they could have made it a couple more years, they would have totally flourished and thrived with government contracts, both companies, in, and even our last entry on this list. As a last-ditch attempt to make money, Hupp bought the rest of the 810 and 812 Cord dies, which they thought was the most beautiful car made up until that point, and shared them with Graham. Each company built their own car. It was about the same style car, just with a different name on it. The Hupp was the Skylark. Graham Hollywood. It wasn't enough to save either company, and both companies went bankrupt in 1940. LaSalle. This was Cadillac's Junior Series car, and the junior make that lasted the longest, offered from 1927 to 1940. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather, steak or chicken, paper or plastic. Two scenarios today. In the first scenario, and money is never an object, I just always like to see what cars you guys dig. 1940 Hup Skylark or 1940 LaSalle or 1940 Graham Hollywood. I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. Moving on to the second scenario, 1929 Jordan G Dual Cal or 1929 Peerless 8125 or 1929 Auburn Phaeton. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to give me both the band and song title. First person to do both correctly will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below or check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. That is honestly the easiest way to get a hold of me is find me on Facebook, shoot me a message. If you can't find me on Facebook or you don't have Facebook, shoot me an email. All of that will be linked in the description below. Just know I appreciate all of the support. And until next time, here are some scenes for our next episode. Airing Sunday at 4.30 Eastern Standard Time, 1967, Oldsmobile 98. Look, a four-door. 
That's what's next on What It's Like. Tune in Sunday to see that episode. And until then, toodaloo!